tapped it out. So what is the Haybike Mars? Well, this is the Haybike's version of a very affordable kind of mid-frame folding fat tire e-bike. This is a folding bike, and I will show you how it folds. If you haven't seen my review of the Ranger, which is a low step through, I'll leave a link at the description. I'll leave a link at the end of this video so you can go check that out. But in today's video, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kind of do the walk through and kind of my final thoughts on the Haybike Mars. I've been using this bike for, I don't know, off and on for a few weeks and I've really kind of like put it through its paces. I will leave chapters down below if you guys want to just kind of skip through the chapters and see different components on this thing and my speed test and final thoughts on this. Alright, so first off I'm going to go over the specs with you guys real quick. It's a 500 watt motor with a thousand watt peak power. It's got a 48 volt, 600 watt, 12.5 amp hour battery. This is a class two e-bike, not a class three. So a class two e-bike means that it goes up to 20 miles per hour. My Ranger is a class three, and that one will do almost 30 miles an hour. They say 25, but I get it up to 30 fairly easy. Hey bike has the range as 5.3 to 6.3 as far as like rider range. And as far as range on the battery, that's the one of the things I get a lot of questions on. What's the range on the battery? A fully charged battery hay bike has it rated at 37 miles with throttle only and 48 miles with pedal assist and I did a full day of riding and I think I got around about almost 30 miles I think it was around about 27 miles on my complete beltway riding and I still had about one bar left on there. So I would have probably, and that was a combination of pedal assist and throttle. So I kept going back and forth on my riding. Throttle only, you're gonna probably get around about 30 to 33 and a pedal assist. I think you could easily get 40 miles on this. And you don't think that's a lot until you get out. That was probably about four hours of riding that I did. So yeah, there's some of the kind of quick specs for y'all. Let me go ahead and I'll start in the back and kind of work my way up and break down each of the components for y'all. So yeah, let's get into the components now. Okay, starting back here at the derailleur. It comes with the Shimano Tourney 7-speed, which is pretty standard. You know, it's decent products, but it's pretty standard on these e-bikes. It does have the spokes instead of the solid rims. It's got the 20 by 4-inch fat tire. I've been really impressed with these. I have these on my Ranger, and they've held up extremely well. Very grippy. So they do have this branded as a hay bike hub motor. I think it's the same motor that's on the Ranger, and that thing's been a beast. I've had no issues out of it at all. It, and to turn the brake light on, you mash that button right there and it turns on the headlight. Not the brightest headlight, but for the price, I think this headlight works just fine. This does come with fenders so you don't get mud and all that crap slung up on you. Just a basic chain that comes on these foldable e-bikes. Nothing special, but it's like enough to get the job done. Has a derailleur protector right there. So if you do lay it down, and by the way, that has saved my derailleur before. I let someone use my, my Ranger and they laid it down and it actually just bent that. It would have probably bent my, broke my derailleur off if I didn't have have that on there moving on up it's a 48 tooth ring in the front here and it has a protector on both the the inside and outside so your pants leg doesn't get caught up in the chain just some basic little small pedals I always upgrade the pedals I upgraded the pedals on my Ranger I would probably upgrade these these are foldable in you mash them in and they will fold up for transport or um, storage when you want to do that it is a shock absorbing seat to adjust the seat you have just your basic lever and I run the seat usually as high as possible but here's a cool feature check this out you this has a removable battery and to remove it you pull this little lever right there lifts the seat up when you turn that all the way off this battery is removable so you see how you can take that battery out. Is that not a cool feature? That way you could take this battery in the house and charge it and you don't have to take the whole bike in. And to put it back in, you just slide it down in there like that, push it into place and the key locks it. And it does have a little USB charger built in right under the handle if you need to charge something so you could charge your cell phone run to a bag or something in the back it does have mechanical disc brakes with 160 millimeter rotors i think that says fidel brakes and these are easily adjust i did adjust them and tighten them up by this bolt right here obviously hydraulic disc brakes would be better but you know what you get what you pay for you want hydraulic disc brakes probably the price is going to go up folding mechanism right here at the middle of the frame to fold it you want to pull this lever and then lift that 
that up and then that opens up and it, that's how you will fold this bike up. Pretty easy to fold and then you'll fold down the handlebars right here. That's easy to do to fold down the handlebars. Plastic fenders on the front, very lightweight fender. They seem to work just fine. I was running through some mud and water. I didn't get anything on me. They are removable. If you don't want them on there, you just use that bolt there and that bolt there and you can take them off. So it does have a spring loaded fork with a lockout. 99% of the time I leave my shocks locked out on these little e-bikes because the four inch tires are so thick, they absorb a lot of the cushion for me. So I find I'm, it's way more responsive if I have that shock locked out than that damper put in there because they're not high quality shocks like on my mountain bike. I have a pretty good Fox shock on there and it works extremely well where these are just kind of like your budget spring loaded shocks and it works just fine. It does have a rebound over here on this side, but I've adjusted that rebound and I don't think it did nothing. I don't think it did anything. Once again, 160 millimeter rotor in the front with the mechanical disc brakes. I like the fact that they've wrapped these wires. It gives it a nice clean look and this is removable too. So onto the handlebars. There's some adjustments right here. Flip that lever and you got some up and down adjustments. You can see how far these things will adjust up and down. I would found that the good mid range right there works just fine. But here's something else that's cool. You turn this one and look at that. You can actually lower your handlebars this way or that way and that worked well too. Locking hand grips, I love me some locking hand grip. I didn't have any issues. The brake levers were a lot better brake levers than what was on my Ranger. I love these little, they kind of felt like motorcycle levers. They were very easy to pull. I could do one finger pulls on these because of the location of them and the angles. Adjusters right there. Shimano shifter up here. Seven speed Shimano shifter. Easy right where you need it. I thought these worked great. You know, I know it's a cheaper e-bike, but this was in a perfect location and you can go to one to seven fairly easy. This has a thumb throttle instead of a twist throttle. I used a bike the other day with a twist throttle and I can tell y'all, I definitely like a thumb throttle on an e-bike. I don't want to, I don't want a twist throttle. I like being able to just lay my thumb on it like that and keep it going. And when my thumb gets tired, I just put my hand on it and let my hand kind of rest on it. It seems to work just perfect. Horn right here. I hate a bell. I absolutely despise a bell. They are so dorky to have a little bell, but I get it. For all y'all out there that love your bells, I love an actual horn. You can turn the display on by holding this down right here for three seconds. Display comes on. You can adjust it. Now, there's all kinds of adjustments if you want to go different power settings per each one of the modes. I run it on three the whole time because I like the option to go faster than I need to. If I don't want to, then just don't go fast, just coast. And when it's in zero, it's just a bicycle. There is no pedal assist and there's no throttle. So you can see right here, the throttle doesn't work. So it's just a bike right now. By the way, when you mask the brakes, it's an automatic motor shut off. So worst case scenario, just hit the brakes and it shuts the motor off and stops you at the same time. This does not have regenerative braking. I did hear one of the questions I got, does it charge while you're pedaling? No. So yeah, let me go ahead and show you guys a quick speed test of where I really put this thing on the road and did a quick little speed test now. Okay, here we go. We're in level zero. You can see I'm at zero right there. I'm in gear one. I'm just gonna go and I'm just gonna pedal this bike as a regular bike just as quickly as I can and shift from one to seven. So I can feel the fat tires resistance and I can feel the weight, but it's not crazy. I'm in one, two, I'm on a flat ground and you can see pedaling as a bike. Not the easiest thing to do, but if you run out of battery and you need to pedal it as a bike, you can definitely do that. It seems to work really well between like two and five. And by the way, when it's in zero, the throttle does not work. How fast can I get it going with just pedaling as a bike only? There's a little bit of squeak when I lift those bars up, I notice. Get up to 17. And I'm a decent mountain biker, so it's not that hard for me. Now we're gonna go pedal assist one. Oh, noticeably, as soon as you start pedaling. It looks like it's very responsive. It's weird, you don't have to pedal hard. Let's go to seven. So now I would be in gear seven. 
and it's just a nice cruising speed. It looks like number one taps out at 10. Let's go to two. Okay, that seems to be about a five mile per hour increment when I'm in level two. And that, I can hold this very easy. Level three. Now I can feel the powers maxed out. I just went to 800 watts. You can see it's holding around about 400 watts of draw and I'm easily at 20 miles per hour. This is a class two e-bike. So it holds this 20 fairly easy. So there you are, we're capped out at, at 20 top speed pedaling in gear seven. And it's, I got a stop sign up here. And then we'll go to throttle. So now I'm in level three and I'm gonna go throttle only taking off and let's see how far it goes. Here we go. No pedaling. Still haven't pedaled. It got to 15 fast, 17. Max powered at 816. There is no pedaling right now. It's capped right at 20. So sure enough, throttle only, you're capped right at 20. Shifter works good. Very easily accessible. The thumb shifter, horn. The actual uh, handlebars are very tight and it's all nicely packed in right here where I can access it with my That's my walkthrough and speed test of the Haybike Mars. I think anyone just wanting the basic, kind of like foldable fat tire e-bike, this would be a great option for them. And I'll leave links below where you can get one of these. So yeah, you guys leave in the comments if you got any experience with these, if with the hay bikes, because I always like hearing what you guys have to say. But yeah, that's all I got today on the Haybike Mars. Yeah, here we go. See you guys. Woo!